Okay, let's talk about GED mathematics. Now, because you're watching this video, I'm going to uh, assume that you are preparing to take the GED, and that is fantastic as passing the GED will have a uh, major positive impact on your future. And what I have here is a practice problem that you should be able to solve without too much difficulty if you are fully prepared for the math that you will see on the GED. Uh, but uh, I'll show you the answer to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. Uh, I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. And over those years, I've constructed many math courses to include a GED math test prep course. Uh, now, this course is extremely comprehensive because the math that you're going to uh, need to know uh, to pass a GED uh, math section is a lot of algebra and geometry. So it is a definitely a college prep level math, not just say basic math. Years ago, um, the GED test was not as difficult as uh, it is now. I think that uh, there was a major change done, I want to say around 2013. But you're definitely going to need to know a lot of high school level mathematics, you know, uh, and probably, you know, to some of you out there, that might be advanced math, right? So uh, definitely, if you're not comfortable with algebra and geometry, I could certainly help you out. So if you're interested, you can check out my uh, GED math test prep course by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem. So what we have here is what we call a basic uh, equation, right? So this is a basic algebraic equation. And what we're trying to do here is solve for the variable t. So if we just kind of look at it on its surface, we t represents a number, right? That's what a variable is in uh, algebra. Okay, so you're thinking what number plus 1, 6 will give us 11, 6? So you can probably uh, think about this long enough and reason through, maybe guess and check, uh, to get the actual value, but uh, we're going to talk about two ways you can solve this equation, but the answer here is 5 thirds. Okay, so t is equal to 5 thirds. Now, if you got that right, that is excellent, uh, but, um, and if you didn't get this right, just use this as feedback, feedback excuse me, but um, if you did get this right, this is what I would call uh, maybe like a level uh, one or two in terms of difficulty uh, out of, let's say, a, a scale of 10, right? So between one and 10, one being the easiest type of problems and 10 being the most challenging problems, this is like a level one or two. So if you got it right, that's uh, excellent, but there's definitely much more advanced math that's on the GED. So I don't want to discourage you, but, you know, again, you need to do a lot of review to be fully prepared for the GED. Let's go ahead and get into the solution here. And basically, there's two ways you can approach this problem, okay? Now, there's two ways I'm going to suggest you can think about it. So um, here again, we have t plus 1, 6 is equal to 11, 6. Now, before you even uh, uh, attempt this problem, there's one thing that you're going to need to understand really, really well, uh, and that is fractions, okay? So if you're not comfortable with fractions, uh, fractions are also within my GED course. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and move forward. And let's talk about the first way you can do this problem. So the first way we can solve an algebraic equation of this uh, type is we have t plus 1, 6 is equal to 11, 6. So what we can do is actually subtract away uh, 1, 6 from this side of the equation. So we have uh, a positive 1, 6. We can subtract a 1, 6 away. Now, why are we trying to do that? Well, we're doing that because we want to get t all by itself. Okay, so the objective here is to get t on one side of the equation and one number on the other side. So this, when we uh, can rewrite the equation in this manner, this would in fact be the solution to the equation, right? But here we don't have t by itself. We have t plus 1, 6. So it would be nice to get rid of this 1, 6. And we can by simply subtracting 1, 6 uh, from this positive 1, 6. But here is the golden rule of algebra. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side, okay? So as long as you do uh, the same thing to the other side of the equation, you can pretty much do anything you want, uh, mathematically speaking, in algebra, okay? So think of an equation like a kind of seesaw, a teeter-totter, if you will, or a scale. So if we want to add a number uh, to one side of the equation, that's perfectly fine as long as we add that same number to the other side or we could subtract uh, a number from this side of the equation as long as we subtract the same number from the other side. Same thing with multiplication and division. 
Okay, so if we keep that in mind, uh, that's really kind of the uh, uh, main idea or in terms of the steps that you need to take to solve equations in algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this now. So again, the objective is to get t by itself. So I get this positive 1, 6, so we'll subtract 1, 6 from both sides of the equation. And this is the way you kind of uh, want to write it, okay, stylistically. So I'm going to show a minus 1, 6 here and a minus 1, 6 here. And then what you're going to do is effectively add down in the column manner. So t plus nothing is t. Positive 1, 6 uh, subtract or plus a, a negative 1, 6 is 0. So there's no need to write that 0. Basically, we got rid of the 1, 6 on the left-hand side of the equation. So now we have 11 uh, over 6 plus uh, uh, negative 1, 6 or 11, 6 minus 1, 6. So we'll write this like this. Okay, so 11, 6 minus 1, 6. Now, of course, we need to uh, work with this basic fraction problem to figure out the actual answer. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? Well, we're trying to subtract fractions. And when you're subtracting fractions, the denominators need to be the same. So in this case, we have the same denominators, which of course are 6. So this is super easy. All we need to do is have the uh, one denominator. So we have 11 over 6 minus 1 over 6. So we're just going to write that one denominator 6. And then we're simply going to subtract the numerators. That's these uh, top numbers here. So that's 11 minus 1. Okay, so 11 minus 1 is 10. So we have 10 over 6, but we don't want to leave our answer like this. We always want to fully reduce and simplify this fraction. So 10 over 6, 2 can go into 10 uh, 5 times, and 2 can go into uh, 6 3 times. Matter of fact, let's me, uh, let me go ahead and just show you this a little bit better. So when you're um, uh, reducing fractions or simplifying fractions, what you're looking for is common factor. So 2 times 5 is 10, and 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so we can kind of think of uh, 10, uh, the fraction of 10 over 6 in this way. So what you want to be doing is looking for like factors. Okay, so in this case, we have 10, uh, 2 and another 2 down here. Factors are things that are separated by multiplication. So we can just cross cancel those like factors and we're left with the fraction 5 thirds. Okay, so that's the first way that you can think about uh, solving this equation. Now, the second approach is a little bit more um, sophisticated, but it's something that uh, is a, more of a common approach uh, when solving um, equations with fractions. And that involves finding the LCD of all the fractions involved in the equation. So here we have the, um, 1 6. So the denominator is 6. LCD stands for the lowest common denominator. Here we have the fraction 11 over 6. So it's denominator 6. So obviously these are in common. Uh, and then here we have t over 1. Okay, so its denominator is 1. So the lowest common denominator is 6. Okay, so hopefully you recognize that. Again, if you don't understand uh, the LCD or how to find it, I teach you all this in my GED math prep course. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, take um, what we now know is the LCD. And once you have the LCD of all the fractions involved in the equation, and it has to be all the fractions, what we could do is just get rid of all the fractions by multiplying the entire equation by the LCD. And this is a very common and excellent technique. Now, in this particular problem, uh, you know, uh, the previous method that we just looked at is pretty easy uh, to work with. But here, when you're dealing with more challenging fractions and expressions, uh, finding the LCD is often the best approach because we just clear all the fractions. So what we're going to do is multiply the entire equation by the LCD. Okay, so let's go and do that now. So 6 is the LCD, of course, and we're going to multiply it by t, so that's going to give us 6t, and then 6 times 1 6 is 1, right? So 6 or 6 over 1 times 1 over 6. So how do we multiply fractions? Just simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators, so that's 6 over 6, which of course is 1. Okay, and then we have 6 times 11 6, and when we do this, the 6 cross cancel, and we're left with 11. Now, if there's anything that you don't understand, you know, if you're looking at the fractions and you're a bit confused, just make mental notes. Be like, okay, I got to really work on this or really work on that. And that's the way you improve in math, right? You improve one skill at a time. Okay, so now what we have is this uh, nice basic algebraic equation with no fractions. And so what we're going to do is solve what we call, uh, it, this is a, a two-step equation because it's going to involve two steps to solve. So the first thing we want to do 
is get rid of this one. So the objective is to get t by itself. So let's just get 6t by itself first by subtracting 1 from both sides of the equation. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add down just like so. So 6t plus nothing is 6t. Positive 1 minus 1 is 0. We don't need to write that. And 11 minus 1 is 10. So now we have this uh, nice one-step equation. Again, there's, this is a two-step equation. Now we're just down to the uh, one last step. So 6t is equal to 10. So to solve this equation, all we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 6. So t is going to be equal to 10 over 6. And of course, we want to reduce all of our fractions. And uh, the fraction 10 over 6 is equal to 5 thirds. Okay, so hopefully this was a good uh, review for you out there. Now, if this was easy, well, you know, uh, believe me, there's going to be much more challenging uh, math problems on the GED. If this was a bit of a struggle, do not get discouraged, okay? I'm telling you right now, irrespective of your background in terms of how much math you had or how long you've been away from math, you can absolutely learn this stuff and be very successful on the GED, okay? So do not give up. Um, as passing the GED is going to have, you know, major positive uh, impact for your future. Um, so here's my kind of my final piece of advice to you is whether you use my course or another course or some other piece of material, do not go uh, show up on exam day without studying, okay, because you're going to be disappointed. So do the right thing for yourself by, you know, fully preparing for all the math that's going to be on the GED, and that's going to be take you more than a week or two, okay? But it's definitely going to be worth it. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the GED. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.